Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the revised GRE, the second edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. You must go through all the all the math problems from this book if you want to get a decent score in it. Uh, if you want, if you if you want to have a decent score in the math portion, that is. If there is any problem at all that gives you difficulty, you will find the solution to the problems from day number 251 through 400. From 251 to 400, the book here that I'm holding in my hand, the second edition, happens to contain almost all the same problems, and in most cases exactly on the same page numbers as the problems that appeared in the first edition of the GRE, uh, revised GRE. If you are interested in watching the original solutions to the problems, you will find the original solutions on day number 1 through 250. Original solutions tend to be a little lengthier and a little bit more in depth. Right now, we are in the process of solving quantitative comparison questions. Quantitative comparison questions are very important. They are still a big part of the exam. Unfortunately, the new books, the revised GRE books, do not provide enough practice questions on the quantity comparison questions. For that reason, we started doing some problems from here. We began our project on day number 401, and today we are on page number 222. Please turn to it. Page number 222, the very first problem that we see there on the page, number 11. As always, even if I forget to remind you at the, at, the begin, at the beginning of each question, even if I forget to remind you, you must get in the habit, I remind you this is almost in every video, that uh, you must get in the habit of pausing the video as soon as I set up the problem on the blackboard, pause the video, solve the problem yourself, and then compare your work against the work that we'll do together. Here's the first one. Problem number 11, when it appeared in the exam, only 40% of the people had had luck with it, 60% of the people, 3 fifths of the people missed it. Here's what the problem says. We are given an equation. We are told that x plus 2y plus z over 2, we are told, equals y. That's the equation that is given to us. And what we are being asked to compare are these two quantities. Column A, we have x. And in column B, we have negative of z. Column x, column A, we have x. In column B, we have negative of Z. Now, what I want you to do is exactly what we just talked about, which is to pause the video and solve it yourself. I'll give you five seconds to do just that, to pause and unpause, solve it yourself, and then we'll do it together, okay? Okay, so here we go. The very first thing we want to do, again, you could actually do it like most people would try to do it, which is to plug in numbers here and play around with it. And if you plug in numbers here and play around with it, you see, you have to be smart about it. You have to be smart about it and realize which situation is a, is, is a proper uh, proper situation to plug in numbers, in which situation plugging numbers will make will expedite the process, and in which situation it's a lousy idea. In some situations, plugging in numbers actually is a better idea. It saves you time, and you can convert a very complicated algebraic problem into a very simple arithmetic problem. In a situation like this, if you try to plug in numbers, it can sometimes lead you to a wrong conclusion. You can lead you to a wrong, wrong conclusion because, because of the fact that whichever answer choice that you pick here, A, B, or C, the claim that we're making is that, for example, if you pick answer choice A, the claim that you're making is that the quantity in column A is always, always, always greater. Uh, and that claim is very difficult to assert just by plugging in one set of numbers just in one instant, in that one instant, the numbers that you plugged in, if the quantity in column A has to be big, uh, bigger than column B, that does not necessarily mean that it may remain bigger at all the rest of the time. If you end up picking answer choice C, again, the claim that you're making it two quantities are always, always, and always equal. Very difficult to assert simply by plugging in one pair of numbers, or two pairs of numbers, or even three pairs of numbers. I would very much prefer to do this thing algebraically. Algebra is not that bad in this problem at all. Let's do it algebraically. Do you understand? Because then algebra, algebraically, we're doing it in an abstract way. Whatever claim we're going to make, it's always going to be true because we never use the numbers. We're doing it algebraically. It's a pure, abstract, philosophical, philosophical solution. Here's what's going on. We see 2 at the bottom. Let's multiply both sides of the equation by 2. Very simple, very straightforward. The 2 is going to disappear here. 
and here we're going to end up with 2y, and here we're going to end up with x plus 2y plus z. So far so good? x plus 2y plus z. I see 2y here, I see 2y here. Let's subtract 2y from both sides. We subtract 2y from both sides, it disappear, this disappears. What we end up is x plus z equals 0. Are you still with me? x plus z equals 0. I'm going to put this down here a little bit. So what we end up here is x plus z equals 0. We're done, that's it. Subtract z, subtract z from both sides and we're done. z drops out and x equals negative z. Here is our column A, here is our column B. x versus negative c. x versus negative z. We just found out that it is equal. This is our column A, this is our column B. They are equal. Answer is c. Answer is c. Let's go to the next one, number 12, shall we? Number 12. Number 12 is a geometry question. We are given a triangle that looks something like this. PQ, let's call it PQR. They don't give this vertices name. They don't give the vertices name, but we're going to give them names so that we can talk about them. PQR, let's call it. And we are told that these two sides are X, since they are both since they tell us that they are both x, which means that these two sides are equal. It's an isosceles triangle. They tell us that this, this angle is z degrees. What else do they tell us? And that's about it. Oh, and this is y. This is y. And what they want us to compare is, in column A, this is question number 12. This is question number 12, and it was 43%. It was 43%. It's always good to know the percentile because it gives you some idea as to how difficult it is compared, how your performance compares to, uh, compares to the other people who take the exam, obviously. Well, first thing, for, they want you to compare col okay, column A and column B. They want us to compare Z versus 60. Z versus 60. First thing first, since they tell us that this is X and this is X, this means these two sides are equal. That means if this angle is Z, if this is the angle, the angle is z, this angle must also be z, because it's an isosceles triangle. Are you with me? And they want us to compare. They want us to compare z versus 60. So again, don't worry about solving it in an abstract way. Just ask yourself: Can it be 60? Can z be 60? Well, let's take a look at it. Okay, let's take a look at it. This side is equal to this side. If this side is 60, this side will have to be 60 because of the fact that it's an isosceles triangle. If this is 60 and this is 60 then because of the fact that the sum has to be 180, this angle will also have to be 60. It will turn into an equilateral triangle. It will turn into an equilateral triangle. I think I left out a very bit of info very bi important bit of information. I left out a very important bit of information. And I, I apologize for that because without it we cannot solve the problem. We are told that x is more than y. We are told that x is more than y. And they cannot be, z cannot be 60 because if z were 60, if z were 60, this would have to be 60, and this is 60, and this is 60, this would have to be 60. All three sides will end up being equal. We are told that x is equal to, x is more than y. So this, it rules out this situation. z, z cannot be 60. Let's ask ourselves, can z be less than 60? Can z be less than 60? Let's find out, shall we? Let's find out. If z is less than 60, then this would have to be less than 60. This side is equal to this side, this is x, this is x, and this is y. Again, keep in mind that we are told that x is more than y. This side, this side is bigger than this side. Since x is more than y, the bigger side in the triangle faces the bigger angle. The opposite angles and sides are proportional. Since x, x is more than y, and since these two angles are equal to each other because these two are the same side, which means this side, because y, because y is less than x, this has to be the smallest angle. This angle has to be the smallest angle. Can z be less than 60? Can z be less than 60? Well, if z is less than 60, this would have to be less than 60. And since they have to add up to 180, this would have to be more than 60. This cannot be more than 60. This, the side facing this angle, side facing this angle, which is y, we are told that's the smallest side. 
Now saying that it's the smallest uh, shortest side is actually technically grammatically it's not correct because we only have two sizes because these two sizes are equal. So among the three sizes actually it is the smallest side, it is the small, shortest side as a matter of fact. Why is, the very sh uh, why is the shortest side? It cannot face the largest angle in the triangle. That tells us that Z cannot be less than 60. Z would have to be more than 60. Z would have to be more than 60. And what we are dealing with is a situation that is this. What we are dealing with is a situation which is this. Z is more than 60, which means this is more than 60. Since this is more than 60 and this is more than 60, it doesn't matter what they are, but they are equal to each other because of the fact that these two, these two are the same size. If this is more than 60 and this is more than 60, their sum is going to be more than 120. Their sum is going to be more than 120, which means this angle, whatever it is, has to be less than 60. And that works just fine. And that works just fine. It just has to be the smallest angle. So we may be looking at a situation like this. We may be looking at a situation like this. Maybe this is 70 and this is 70. That's 140 and maybe this is 40. And that would work just fine. And here's your y and here's your x and x. And y, y is less than x. It's perfectly fine. Even th this one is not drawn to scale, obviously. So the conclusion here is that z cannot be less than 60. Uh, z, z cannot be less than 60. Z cannot be equal to 60. Z would have to be more than 60. Z would have to be more than 60. And therefore, since z, whatever it is, is more than 60 versus 60, the answer is A. The answer is A. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.